Happy New Year and welcome to Hunts Forge in Sheffield, the home of the Sharks tonight, played host to the LP Trophy final between the Derby Trailblazers and Team Newcastle University. My name is Ian Jeff. I'm joined by two head coaches who I've had the privilege of coaching in one season. Ian Stanley, head coach of the night, Robert Banks, head coach of the Thames Valley Cavaliers, and Ben Collins. We're expecting a sellout crowd across the day with the Riders Sharks game to follow. They've come out because of the strength of the Division 1 season. These two teams sit 5th and 7th in Division 1 and they're in the showpiece final. final. Just talk to us a little bit about the strength of the Division 1 this season. I mean, I think it's probably the strongest I've seen it since I've been in basketball. It's a fantastic advert for basketball in the UK. And there are 10 teams, I would think, that could beat anybody at any given point. to see as their style of play. With Newcastle, uh, they are a team of shooters, they have outstanding ball movement, and you have some guys who absolutely can flat out shoot the ball. Federici, I reckon, is one of the best shooters in the country at any in any league. And and Ben, depth-wise, four players averaging 34 plus minutes a game in Moya, Blaine, Federici, and Gale. Does that depth get stretched ever so slightly today in a showpiece game? I, I think maybe it does. I think because it's a showpiece game, uh, coming out of the break, it really depends on, uh, as Robert said before the game, how much have they been in the gym, how in shape are the guys. But, you know, Derby are a deep team, so it, it could provide problems for them down the stretch for sure. And Blaine, one of those players, Robert, that we've seen already with a 54-point performance against Worthing in the National Cup. What are we going to see from him? Is he the key to the game for that Newcastle team? For Newcastle, he is definitely one of their keys. Uh, he's, the, he's the guy that they have that can uh, attack off the dribble. He's tremendous in transition, and he's also a very good offensive rebounder. So I'm not going to say as he goes, they go, but he is certainly one of the key factors for their success. And Martin Gale, Ben, a, a huge pickup for them as well. He's bounced around the league a little bit, had experience in the BBL and Division One. Another shooter to add to that roster, though. So it's just another weapon around Blaine. Yeah, absolutely. I think he's contributing in other ways as well. I think he's averaging nearly nine rebounds uh, in the Lynch. And he's shooting absurd splits, 52 and 54 percent. Um, and you can guarantee if the game is close in the fourth quarter, Martin's going to make two ridiculously tough three-point shots in that fourth quarter, at least. And then the other end with the Derby Trailblazers, Malcolm Smith averaging 25.7 points per game in the Lynch. He's got to be the key factor for the Trailblazers today. Well, absolutely. Malcolm's one of the most difficult matchups in the league by far. He's outstanding with his mid-range game. His post-up game is, is, is excellent. He's, in the last uh, couple of seasons, has stretched out the three ball. And he is also one of the players who gets a lot of fouls. He's extremely clever with the ball. Watch him. He can get, uh, if he gets uh, Newcastle in foul trouble, it could be interesting. Well, it looks like the teams are just ready to be announced here at Sheffield. So for the team introductions, we're going to hand back over to your lead commentator for today, who is John Hobbs. Good morning everyone and a warm welcome to Ponds Forge here in Sheffield for the L Lynch Trophy Final and hello to everyone watching wherever you are across the world. John Hobbs keeping you company in the commentary booth. Liam will be joining me momentarily as the first domestic trophy of the season up for grabs today. Certainly an intriguing feel to it. Derby Trailblazers, conquerors of last season's L Lynch Trophy winners, the Solent Kestrels, in the semi-finals. Going up against a team Newcastle University side who were last season's surprise package in the NBL Division One, but they have proved to be they've proved it to be no fluke this term competing in their first final. Liam is just about to join me and as we uh, try and get over the noise that the 
Derby fans are bringing at the moment. Liam, can you hear me over this noise? I can, just about, John. <laughs> My just goodness about. me. So, Liam, just before we um, we talk about uh, these two teams, let's go into the lineups for uh, to, to today's teams. Starting with Newcastle, a very strong lineup, of course, led by three players, Ronald Blaine, David Moyer and Brandon Federici. Yeah, very strong team. I'd also add Martin Gale into that mix as well. We were just talking about him down courtside. He's been a big addition to that roster this year as another weapon to be able to shoot the ball. But talking to Mark Elderkin beforehand, he was singing the praises of Ronald Blaine. They go as he goes for sure. And yeah, I'm excited to see what they have to offer today in a showpiece final. And Liam caught up with Mark Elderkin a bit earlier on. Matt, a first final of the Division One season. Just tell us a little bit about what it means to the club and to the Derby Trailblazers to be in the final. Everyone's really excited about it. Lots of people have worked with many of the players on the floor. We've got lots of junior players that have come through the club that are playing. So it feels like it's a whole club that's contributed to getting to this final. And Ryan Brueggemann back in the roster after a lengthy injury spell, a couple of games to get back to this point. What does he mean to this team and to have him back healthy? Yeah, he's top player. Certainly makes a huge difference for us having him on the floor. Can definitely score, but just getting everyone involved in his leadership is going to be really important, I think. And going up today against a talented Newcastle team that you've already met once already this season. What's going to be one of the keys to the game to getting a victory and that first silverware? Yeah, it's going to be really hard. We know Newcastle are a very good team, really talented, lots of three-point threats. So trying to limit how many threes they get, how many open threes they get, and trying to slow them down a little bit in transition. But we know we've got a tough task. They're really good. We'll have to be at our best to win. Matt, appreciate it, and good luck for the final ahead. Thanks a lot, Liam. Some words there from Matt Shaw beforehand. Now we'll go to, um, in fact, we'll actually go to the Derby Trailblazers team. That was actually Matt Shaw we spoke to. Mark Elderkin will follow, but um, we'll go to the Derby team. And a team littered with talent, again, um, led by Ryan Brueggemann. But some good names in there as well. Yeah, for sure. And you add in some of those names we didn't get to talk about in the pregame show, like Leighton Elliott Sewell. And Blake Bowman, youth products coming back to the club, adding some talent, athleticism and length to that Derby team. And definitely a clash of two different styles between the two. So intrigued to see what kind of style comes out on top. So we heard from Matt Shaw from the Derby Trailblazers. Now we will hear from Team Newcastle coach uh, Mark Elderkin. Mark, a first final after just your second season in Division yes. 1. Just give us a little bit of an overview of what it just means to you and the club to be in this position. Um, well, we've said in the lead-up, we're unbelievably proud. You know, it's our second season back in the division, my second season as a coach, and only our second season together as a group. I think we've come a long way in a short space of time, and the lads have just been super excited. It's been a pretty giddy few days, to be honest, yeah. And talented roster this year behind some stellar play from, from Ronald Blaine, that big 54-point yes. performance earlier in yes. the season. What does he mean to your group and, and how important is he going to be today? Everything, everything. Defensively, I don't think people realise how good he is. He's an underrated passer surrounded by three-point shooters, and I think that's something people don't realise about him. And he's a winner. Like, mentally, he, he's a winner. He, he's huge for us. He means everything. And coming up against a really talented Derby Trailblazers team yes. with the likes of Malcolm Smith, Jonas Dietrich and Ryan Brueggemann. Yes. What are you going to have to do today to take them out of their rhythm and to stop them to get that win? Well, I think both teams are just really different. We're small, we like to push the pace, we like to shoot. They're long, they're big, they're athletic, they like to slow it down and dominate near the basket. So whichever team manages to impose their style the most will probably win this game. Yeah. Mark, we appreciate it and yes. good luck for the final ahead. Thank you very much, mate. So that was, that was Mark Elderkin just uh, beforehand. And these two teams have actually played each other this season. Newcastle coming out 89-82 winners, a very closely fought encounter. That is definitely what we're going to be seeing here today. Yeah, for sure. And they'll, they'll take a lot from that to be able to prepare for this game and what they're going to see from, from either team. But... I think Mark summed it up in, in the interview beforehand. It is two very different styles of play. Newcastle want to get out and play in transition. They live and die by that free ball. 34 threes a game in the Lynch Trophy competition. 
Derby, much more of a slower, walk it up, get into your offense type of team, but also more of a defensive team. So they're going to be looking to slow them down. I really can't call which way this one's going to go. One thing I do know, if Newcastle are close within three quarters, they are a fourth quarter team as we've seen all absolutely. season long. Absolutely. No, absolutely. Newcastle, they used their fourth quarter strengths to beat the Worthing Thunder in the quarterfinals. They did so as well against the Reading Rockets in the semifinals. They were down by as many as 15 in a fourth quarter blowout almost secured their spot in the L Lynch Trophy final here today. So we'll get to the starting fives for the two teams, starting with the Derby Trail Blazers. Kind of as you expect, Blake Bowman, Ryan Brueggemann, Raheem May Thompson, Jonas Dietrich and Malcolm Smith. Lots of firepower in there. And for Team Newcastle, David Moyer, um, Thamba Yabantu, Brandon Frederici, Ronald Blaine, and Martin Gale. So, kind of, kind of as you were an expected starting five from both teams. Yeah, definitely. Brueggemann being back healthy for the Trailblazers could be one of the keys to this game. I think they struggled ever so slightly without him. He came back for that Solent semi-final game, and you saw the difference it made because he's another weapon from long range. You take him out, they only really have Dietrichs as a three-point shooter. So I think today Brueggemann could be one of the real keys. At the other end for Newcastle, firepower all over the floor Absolutely. around Ronald Blaine. They play small ball. He's probably a traditional free man and he's starting at the five, but he has four shooters around him able to pass and create, which could open up a lot from this ball game. So we are moments away here at Ponds Forge in Sheffield. Of course, Derby will be playing in blue, Newcastle playing in white today. We just sort out just one or two uh, mic issues. I'm fine now, by the way. So here we go, the 2022 L Lynch Trophy final here at Ponds Forge in Sheffield. Blake, Blake Bowman and Ronald Blaine will be tipping us off. And we are underway here at Ponds Forge in Sheffield, the 2022 El Lynch Trophy Final. Here is Brueggemann to Dietrich. Brueggemann. Brueggemann looking for options, finds it in Bowman, corner three, in and out. And Gale with the rebound. Good start defensively from Newcastle there, switching everything to really disrupt the Trailblazers on that first possession. Blaine misses the layup, and May Thompson comes up with the rebound. Dietrich likes that spot, but is short with his three. Gale, as Newcastle slow it down. Moya for three. Of course, Newcastle like the three-point shot. May Thompson, and both teams really struggling from the field at the moment. Here is Moya, finds Federici. Federici up and under is good. And something that Federici's not quite known for, more of a knockdown catch and shoot shooter to get to the basket for the first score of the game. Here is Smith. And Smith is no good. Here is Moya. Moya, short jumper, in and out. And Brueggemann with the rebound. Fast paced start to this game, but not many points on the board. But there's Malcolm Smith and a foul. And Derby are off and running. And that's where Derby will have that advantage inside with the size of Malcolm Smith. Ronald Blaine is a solid defender and his length can really disrupt down there. But Smith, one of the strongest players in the league. That could be a key for Derby. Yeah. 
Here is Moya. And the ball goes out of bounds. It will be a Newcastle ball, or it'll be a Derby ball, excuse me. As we continue to have a few mo issues with our headset, I think we're working now. Liam, can you hear me? I can indeed, John. <laughs> I can indeed. Here is Smith. To Bowman. Acres of space for Bowman, but short with his three. Just a bit of a cagey opening. All team, both teams, sorry, a little bit short on any of their jumpers that haven't been at the front of the rim. And that's some of that early nerves. And also, just depends how much these two teams have been able to practice over the last two weeks. Absolutely. Both teams have not played since the start of December. So almost a month out of action. As Smith has the ball. Here is Bowman. Brugerman. May Thompson, wide open three for Raheem May Thompson, and he strings it. That's going to be a good sight for the Derby Trailblazers if you can get a couple of frees in the game from Raheem May Thompson, who's traditionally a slasher and loves to play at the rim. He's talking about slashing to the hoop, David Moyer misses the layup. Here is Brugerman. Brugerman drives inside, high off the glass, no good. May Thompson with the loose ball, and he's going to go to the foul line. And Derby with a statement of intent early, leading 6-4 to four with 6.58 remaining. And making their presence known on the offensive boards. That's where they, they can really use their size, length and athleticism to, to dominate on the, the offensive glass and get those second chance point opportunities. Head to the free throw line and Newcastle are going to have that, that gang, gang mentality in order to grab the rebounds and get out and play that fast pace that they want to be able to play. If you just joined us on the Basketball England YouTube channel, welcome everyone. The L Lynch Trophy final here at Ponds Forge in Sheffield as Raheem <laughs> May Thompson makes both free throws and Derby lead 8 to 4. Moya finds Federici. Open three is good. David Moya leading the league in assists with eight assists a game. Gets his first assist of the day and. Federici with her, his first three of the day. Malcolm Smith doesn't respond. Here is Yabantu. Yabantu loses the ball. And Derby come up with it. Dietrich stepped out of bounds. And it will be a Newcastle ball. Brandon Federici, though, you can't allow him to get hot from three. He shoots in the Lynch Trophy 13.8 attempts per game, which is unbelievable to be honest. But he also makes five and a half of those. Absolutely, that's, yeah. a, that's a huge factor in their offense for Newcastle. A team high 44% from downtown this season for a Newcastle team that love to shoot the three, as you alluded to earlier. They took 15 three-pointers in their quarterfinal win against the Worthing Thunder, was 16 of 37 against the Reading Rockets in the last four. Here is Blaine. Blaine on the spin. Good defense, though, from May Thompson. And here is Bowman. Bowman slashing. Bowman finishing. He's such an additional weapon to this team since he's come back. Averaging, I think, 22 points. Uh, sorry, he had 22 points against Solent in that semi-final. It just adds another element to their offense and another driver that you have to worry about. Absolutely, almost like the lane just opened up for Blake and he made no mistake inside. Here is Blaine. Of course, Blaine who had 21 points, 10 rebounds in the semi-final win against the Reading Rockets. Struggling though at the moment, here is Brueggemann. Pulls up and that's short. Ball will go out of bounds. It will stay a derby ball. And I like that matchup for, for Raheem May Thompson guarding Ronald Blaine at the moment to just disrupt him rather than having Malcolm Smith guard him, who's, I think, guarding Yabantu when, when they're down on that end of the floor. And May Thompson, more of a natural matchup for Blaine at that kind of three, four forward position rather than a five. And so far, it's really working. He's struggling from the field. Deer trick on the catch and shoot. 
And ball goes back out of bounds. Derby will stay with possession with uh, 14 reset onto the shot clock. We enter the halfway point of this first quarter in the El Lynch Trophy final here at Ponds Forge. Smith puts up a three. No good. Dietrich with the offensive rebound. Good defense, though, from Yabantu. Derby fans saying that he stepped out of bounds. Federici. Here is Yabantu. Federici, quick release. And May Thompson with the rebound. Strong defensive transition from uh, the Trailblazers on that possession. Strong move from Smith. Gets his own rebound. And Yabantu with the foul. Or, well, excuse me, Martin Gale with the foul. And Malcolm Smith will go to the foul line. And Malcolm Smith you know, virtually needs no introduction to this country, this league. You know, he's, uh, he's actually had a spell in Newcastle, but with the old defunct team, Northumbria University, moved to Derby and has made that his home now. And obviously a fan favourite and repaying them with some strong performances over the years. Yeah, and consistently among the best performers in Division 1 since he's been with Northumbria and then gone to another level with Derby. Come into this game averaging 22.5 points per game, 5.8 rebounds, shooting over 50% from the field. I mean, from your, from your big man, your 4-5, what more can you ask for? Absolutely. Derby with an early 12-7 lead as Moyer breaks the uh, press. And ball goes out of bounds, and it will stay a Newcastle possession. Derby so far doing a great job of getting bodies back beneath the ball every time Newcastle wants to run. They try and run off scores as well as misses. And Derby doing a really good job getting back home, protecting the paint, and then matching up from there just to slow that Newcastle offense. Gale for three. Gale puts in a three under immense pressure. You can slow it, but that's always a threat with this Absolutely. Newcastle team. And they trim it to two. Elliot Sewell into the game for the first time for Derby. Here he is on the ball. And he turns it over. Federici comes up with it. Moya behind the back pass to Federici. No good with the layup. Maybe Moya could have gone on his own. Either way, here is May Thompson. Good defense from Yabantu. And a jump ball has been called. And the possession arrow will stay with the Derby Trailblazers. Or about that one, a very quick jump ball call. From here, it did look like you know good defense yeah. originally from Ubantu, but uh, referees calling otherwise. Now the arrow's pointing in the other direction, so it will actually be a Newcastle ball. And the horn just goes off again. I think Derby want to get a quick substitution in as uh, Blake Bowman will take a seat. Charlie Brown will. Check in, Charlie Brown, a traditional pass first point guard. Doesn't get a lot of points, doesn't really take a lot of shots a game, but uh, distributes the, wall, the ball fantastically. He does 6.1 assists per game. He had 0.6 rebound and 4 assists against Solon, so doing it exactly as you say. And I think he'll now allow Brueggemann to play off ball a little bit as well and try and get him some open jump shots. Here is Brueggemann. Brueggemann was open for the three, but decided to pass it out. Yabantu comes up with it, finds Blaine. Moya couldn't control the ball, but drives inside. Finds Gale for three, and he knocks down another one. He's a big-time player. He's played on the highest stage, bounced around the BBL and Division One a little bit, but you can't give him that much time and space on the three-point line. Averaging 13 points a game. As Malcolm Smith answers with a two inside, and the inbounds pass from Ronald Blaine asking a bit too much of David Moyer, so Derby will retain possession. And a timeout has been called by Derby Trailblazers. Newcastle leading 15 to 14 here in the El Lynch Trophy final in Sheffield. And we are here in Ponsford, Sheffield, of course. The El Lynch Trophy final originally was set for Worthing, but due to logistical reasons, the final has been moved to Sheffield. And while it's great to you know, be here today with a near full house here at Ponsforge, 
we've got to give a, a big shout out to everyone involved with the Worthing Thunder who were organising this event and have graciously moved it over to Sheffield. So a big thank you to Sarah Jen and Zaire Taylor. They're hosting their own event, a Sussex showdown today uh, against Division 3 side GSD Bogner. So all is not lost on their side, but it's still great to, to be here today in Sheffield. It is, yeah. I actually came and studied in Sheffield, so this is a bit of a throwback for me because we played some of our university games in here. But, yeah, a, a massive shout-out and credit to, to Worthing for being so accommodating to be able to move the final. And I'd expect nothing less from those guys down there. It's, it, they're a proper family club. Always love the experience of going down there and playing, and hopefully we get down there for some other games throughout the season. Absolutely, and uh, a really fun preview, actually, of that Sussex showdown. Uh, on their Worthing Thunders Instagram uh, page the other day, hosted by Ishmael Fontaine and uh, Luke Atfield, a former Worthing Thunder player, now playing for GSD Bogner, was a part of that. It was a really fun preview show. Brueggemann for three. And Blaine with the rebound. Here is Moyer, finds Blaine, drives inside, good Hands, though, from Leighton Sewell, and here come the Trailblazers. Great transition basketball, too strong off the glass, and Leighton Sewell will pick up the pieces. How about that for an offensive rebound and back up? And a blocking foul called on Raheem May Thompson. So far, though, it, it does seem that Derby have, are sussing out uh, Ronald Blaine, obviously their main offensive threat, Newcastle's main offensive offensive threat hasn't really done a heck of a lot right now a lot of the scoring coming from Moyer and Federici yeah they're doing a really good job of keeping a body between him and the basket he wants to slash he wants to get to the rim wants to get scores in the paint a couple of times if I was Matt Shaw I'd be a little bit concerned because they've collapsed quite heavily off shooters and if he can get his head up and hit someone like he did with Gale in the corner that's going to open up Newcastle's offense a little bit. So if they can contain him 1v1 and keep someone between him and the basket, then they'll be, they'll be able to limit him further in this game. Martin Gale actually leading the Newcastle scoring at the moment with six points as Ronald Blaine misses the first free throw. Ranked second in the uh, National Basketball League in scoring with 29 points a game, only... Taylor Johnson of Hemel Storm averages more. Brueggemann kicks it out. Blake Bowman back into the game and strings a three. And interestingly, Derby settling more for the three-point shot than Newcastle so far. They've shot nine already in the first quarter. Newcastle have shot five. They've elected to go inside for most of their points. Not having great success at the moment. And here is Brown. Bowman finds a bit of room, puts up another three. Look for the bank. And Blaine with the rebound. And where Blaine is not really scoring much, he's got his fourth rebound. And here is Blaine. As they slow it down a bit here, Moyer. Back to Blaine with five to shoot. And a foul has been called on Leighton Elliott Sewell. Good job from Ronald Blaine there to bait Elliot Sewell into that foul, just showing him the ball slightly and then ripping through to put down on the floor. I actually thought there was a travel before that. Emmanuel Cabangele in the game for, for the first time, but Newcastle got away with one. Here is Moyer. Good defense, though, from Brueggemann, and Newcastle will keep possession with six on the shot clock. Here is Blaine, back to the basket, and shot from Martin Gale was no good. Here is Brueggemann, nice pass inside, and Malcolm Smith with the layup. Up to and nine points. Time out has been called by Newcastle. Malcolm Smith up to nine points in the game and four rebounds already. Two of them on the offensive glass, and he's so tough to handle down there in that that low block, like front of the rim area, and. Just wonder whether Newcastle and Mark Elderkin are going to look to bring in one of their bigs to perhaps match up with him, which does slightly go against their style of play. So 
Intrigued to see what adjustments they might make out of this timeout. Absolutely, and Newcastle traditionally a very guard-heavy team. Not really a lot of forwards in their lineup today. They do have you know Ronald Blaine as a main their main offensive threat inside, but mainly Newcastle just very guard-heavy, aren't they? They are, yeah. They have the likes of Rodwell, Marsden, and Cork, but they're they're low minutes guys. They they play between five and ten a game, um, and Newcastle not the sort of team that rotates heavy. Either. They tend to go six, seven deep into, into their roster. And in a final, you always know that rotations get even shorter. So at the minute, only seeing six from Newcastle. Whereas Derby on the other end have had, uh, ah, they've only had seven guys in the, in the ball game so far. So, yeah, I'm intrigued to see what Coach Elderkin does out of this timeout to just try and slow Malcolm Smith down ever so slightly. Still early days, though. You know, we're in the first quarter, one minute, 25, three quarters, a lot of basketball still to be played here at Ponds Forge. But so far, Derby have the upper hand, 21 to 16. But as we've seen, not just in the El Lynch Trophy, but throughout the season, Newcastle, a big fourth quarter team. So all is not lost. As Brueggemann steals it off Moyer, but slips on the floor. And Blaine comes up with it. Finds Federici, a quick release three is no good. That's where Newcastle are most dangerous, though, and I think Derby got away with one slightly there. And Blake Bowman tricking the defense for two. Fantastic support here from the Derby Trailblazers. Faithful a near full house at Ponds Forge today. Anyone would think that we're in the Clarence Wiggins Sports Hall. <laughs> Baseline jumper from Gale is no good, and Charlie Brown comes up with it as we enter the final 30 seconds of this first quarter. It's been very cagey, but Derby have the upper hand. Smith inside, and Malcolm Smith is going to go to the foul line. Again, just struggling with Smith down low. I almost wonder if, if Newcastle perhaps look at a little bit of zone just to be able to, to limit Smith, especially when you look at the sort of lineups that they've got on, on the floor right now. Derby only really with Brueggemann as a shooter. Blake Bowman, streaky, he can knock him down when he gets going, and he has got one already, but the minute, they just need to look at a different kind of look to slow Malcolm Smith, otherwise he's going to be on for an MVP-type game, and we're only in the first quarter. As Ryan Brueggemann will take a seat, Ashley Filigan Ugo will come into the game for the first time. Malcolm Smith hits the first 21 points in their win against Solent in the semi finals. Of course, Solent were favourites to reclaim or retain their El Lynch Trophy final. And Derby rose to the challenge in that semi final. A fantastic second half showing. As Martin Gale misses the easy layup inside, here is Brown. Shot clock turned off, final seconds of this first quarter. Ugo misses the ball. And the end of the first quarter here at Ponds Forge. Derby with the upper hand though, 24-16 to the good against Team Newcastle. Malcolm Smith with 11 points and five rebounds to lead the Trailblazers. And for Team Newcastle, Martin Gale leads the way with six points. Newcastle traditionally a slow burner when it comes to you know, progressing quarter by quarter. As I said earlier, they're a strong fourth quarter team. And Derby, as expected, getting the upper hand after 10 minutes. Yeah, you can't, you can't count this Newcastle team out at any point in any game. They could be down by 30 and I think still have an opportunity to claw their way back in and get a win. They're going to want to talk about making some adjustments. Smith and limiting him around the basket is going to be one of the keys. But then they also need to find a way to start to unlock some of their offense. Only taking five three-pointers so far. They're three for five, so they're shooting a good percentage. But they're just not getting some of the looks that they might be accustomed to. And if you're Derby, you're happy holding them to, to 16 in the first quarter. And you know, for Newcastle, as you said, a very strong three-point shooting team. Haven't shot the ball from deep a lot. They've opted to go inside. It hasn't really worked for them. And as you say, it's just about playing to your strengths. 
It is, yeah. They're, they're second in the Lynch in three-point percentage at 38%. And as we said before, shooting 34 a game in Division One this season. So they're, they're slightly off the pace with what they would usually expect. And that's credit to the scout that Derby have put, put in because they're not giving them opportunities. They're running shooters off the line. They're trying to force them into the paint. And then there's an extra body there to, to help and to, to stop them from getting to the basket. Um, I'm intrigued to see what Mark Elderkin does here with rotations, whether he looks to stick with the same sort of group. And it looks like it is as they come back out. Traditionally, the starting five for Newcastle, especially Moya, Blaine and Federici, do usually play around 36 to the full 40 minutes a game. Blaine and Moya rank second and third, respectively, in efficiency this season. Only Taylor Johnson has more. Here is Dietrich. Turnaround jumper from Smith. It's no good. Kane King into the game for the Trailblazers. Finds Ugo. Here is Smith. Puts it in and a foul. Mid-range jumper from Malcolm Smith got knocked on the head as he released the shot. And it was all string. He loves that mid-range jump shot. That is Malcolm Smith's game. Absolutely loves it. But that's also the eighth offensive rebound of the game already for the Trailblazers. And they've got ten second chance points off those eight really the story of the game so far for them. As Smith makes no mistake with the three-point play. Moya finds Gale. Likes that spot. Doesn't get the three to go, though. Here is King. Kane King, an athletic point guard off the bench. Smith goes for three. No good. Ugo with the foul. Yeah, that's, that's the right call. I mean, Derby have been aggressive on the offensive boards, but Ugo just a little bit, a little bit too aggressive on that one. First foul on Ashley Ugo. Here is Moya. Moya lost the ball, and Ugo again just reaching in, and another foul in quick succession for the Derby number two. Yeah, and Ash, Ash is one of those sorts of players. He doesn't leave anything, <laughs> leaves everything out on the floor. Uh, we had him at Loughborough for a little spell, and he was no different then. Here is Bowman. Bowman gets it back from King. Ugo in acres of space, goes inside and scores. I don't think even he could believe the amount of space he had as he spun. Here is Bain. Another whistle has gone. Second quarter just getting a little scrappy at the moment. Both teams still trying to feel each other out, you feel. Yeah, and, and Derby just needs to be careful because that's three team fouls now in the first minute and a half of the quarter. In the first quarter, they did such a good job of moving their feet and containing and keeping in front. Now they're just getting a little bit, a little bit handsy trying to reach in for steals that I don't think they need to at the moment. As David Moyer strings a three for Newcastle, a much needed three-pointer. Here is Dietrich looking to answer, and that's long. Derby lead by 10 in the early stages of this second quarter. Here is Yabantu. Finds Blaine. Finds Federici in the corner. And Federici really struggling from downtown so far. Here is Dietrich driving. A floater is short. And ball goes out of bounds and it will stay a derby possession. And Dietrich's really struggling from the field to start the ball game. He's 0 for 5 to start. And that's not typical of Jonas and what we've come to expect from him over the years that he's been in Division 1. He spent some time with us at Loughborough where he became one of our standout performers. And the jumper is his game, really. And if it's struggling to fall, he has to find other ways to contribute. Absolutely. Five seasons with the Loughborough Riders. Jonas Dietrich. Here is Yabantu. To Moya. Federici opts to slow it down. Here is Blaine. Blaine driving. Blocked. 
by Smith, gets his own rebound and scores. And Ronald Blaine, tenacious to stay with the play. And he's going to need a couple of those just to get himself going with the way Derby are guarding him early in the ball game. Good defense from Blaine on Brueggemann. Here is Yabantu in transition goes Moya, blocked by May Thompson. Good defense from Derby, back-to-back -back blocks. Been really impressed with that Derby Trailblazers defense to, to start the ball game. They're closing out with like their hairs on fire to some of the shooters to run them off the line. And then they're doing a phenomenal job to get back around the rim and, and not allow anything easy for Newcastle. If they can keep this up, they're going to be very, very tough to beat. 29-21, 7-18 remaining in the second. Here is Blaine. Blaine drives at May Thompson. Another block from May Thompson. And for Ronald Blaine, he's really struggling to find an answer to Raheem May Thompson's defense. He is. It looked like he had him beat then. But then those, <laughs> we used to say, go-go gadget arms of Raheem May Thompson came out of nowhere to block the shot and make up for it. But Ronald Blaine, like I was saying before, he's one of those players that's just tenacious. He, <laughs> he won't stop. He's going to keep going for the full 40 minutes. He's one of my favorite players to watch in, in Division One. I'm sure he'll find a way to adjust as this ball game goes on. Here is Blaine, now opts for the three-pointer, and it's long. May Thompson with the rebound. Here is Blaine Thompson going all the way, and layup is no good. Federici with the rebound. Here is John Cork into the game for the first time. Cork gets it back, stripped by Smith, and Derby come up with it. Here is Brueggemann. Inside to Smith, quick turn, misses the layup, gets his own rebound, battling inside, another and one opportunity for Malcolm Smith. He is a problem, and I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a timeout come in here, and we do from the Team Newcastle Knights, just to, to talk it over ever so slightly. But Malcolm Smith, we said at the, at the top of the show in the pregame, talking to Ben Stanley and, and Robert Banks, that... He has been their most consistent performer in the Olin's Trophy, averaging in like 25 points per game. And he's just such a dominant force down there when you don't have a matchup for him. And that's been the real problem for them at the moment. So far, flirting with a triple double as well 15 points, eight rebounds already for Malcolm Smith. A chance to add another point to his tally from the foul line following this free throw. Now, as we have a break in play, these two teams uh, have met already and we. Briefly spoke about it in the pre-game show. But Newcastle coming away with an 89-82 victory over the Trailblazers, of course. A much different circumstance here today. We're in a neutral venue. And it's a big final, the first domestic final of the season. Newcastle haven't seemed to have settled into this final so far. And Derby you know, have taken to it quite well. This is their first final since 2014. What do Newcastle have to do to try and get that focus back from when they played these, this team last time out? It, they've got to take it possession by possession. At, at the minute, I think that whenever they can't get out and play in transition and get those easy scores, they're, they're rushing ever so slightly. And I know they are a fast-paced team and they want to find those shooters. But they need to slow it down and, and get into a little bit of offense when they can't get out in transition. But I think the other factor that we've seen so far as well is for a lot of the players on the Newcastle team, this will be their first domestic final in this country. They may have played finals in their college careers and high school careers, but you've got some real experience in that Derby team that have played in multiple finals in this country, and that always comes up dividends. Yabantu with the three. And that's a big plus for Newcastle to have Yabantu knocking one down and trims it to seven, which is only a, a few shots and they're back in the ball game. And here is Yabantu off the steal. Gets the layup too strong. And Dietrich comes up with the loose ball. Here is May Thompson. Finds Bowman inside. Bowman puts it in and a foul. And Derby with great success inside. And they're making the most of it. They are. And for me, if, if you're Newcastle, you have to do your work early. They're allowing far too many catches in the paint, which is allowing them to get that advantage and then go finish at the rim. And you're, you're always trying to make up for it in those situations, which is why we're seeing so many fouls. And we're seeing them head to the free throw line. You have to bump cutters. You have to wrestle and jostle for position. And Derby are really capitalizing on it right now. 
So far though, seven for 10 from the foul line. 18 points in the paint, so they're making up for it right there. Federici for three, and Federici's struggles from downtown continue. He is now one for four. Late Bowman, nearly stolen by Gale. And Brueggemann will pick up the pieces with six to shoot. Brueggemann with the pull-up jumper, and that's all string. Brueggemann with his first make from downtown in the game goes to one for three and also his first bucket of the game as well. As Ronald Blaine answers back at the other end. And Derby have a nine point lead halfway through the second quarter. Brueggemann feeling it. And a bit of a quick heat check there for <laughs> Brueggemann. Here is Blaine. Great matchup with Raheem May Thompson. We've seen some great highlights so far. Here is Yabantu, finds Gale at the foul line, and that's good. Dietrich finds Smith, loves that mid range jumper, but it's long this time, and Blaine with another rebound. Finds Federici, a long three, and that's long. And ball goes out of bounds, it'll be a derby ball. And another timeout called, this time by Matt Shaw. 4.31 remaining, Derby have a 35-28 lead. And so far, if you're Matt Shaw, Liam, it's, you know, you've done a good job, but it's just to keep that momentum going. Yeah, definitely, and, and trying to continue to capitalize on those advantages that you're creating on the offensive end, I think, their defense is what's really fueling them in this ball game. We talked about it a little bit earlier at the start of this quarter, but the way that they're closing out with intent on those Newcastle shooters. I think Newcastle is shooting five for five for twelve from three point range. So they're still up at around forty percent. But Derby just doing a phenomenal job of getting out to them, getting a high hand, running them off the line and not allowing them to get com comfortable out there. So yeah, if you're Matt Shaw, it's it's much of the same. Stay the course, stay with the scout. Continue to build this lead if you can do. Don't let Newcastle chip away. But, I mean, we've been talking about them all day. It's only a seven-point ball game. Newcastle accustomed to coming from behind and, and getting back into ball games. And you can never count them out. Of course, a fantastic atmosphere here inside Ponds Forge International Sports Centre in Sheffield. Of course, home of the Sheffield Sharks. They'll be playing the Leicester Riders uh, after this game today. That's a game you can watch on the BBL player. Here is Bowman, finds May Thompson. May Thompson off the glass, no good. And on the follow was Leighton Sewell. Another or Elliot offensive Sewell, rebound excuse me. as well. That's their 12th offensive rebound in, in the ball game. At some point, you have to put a body on them. They have athleticism, they have length. If you're Mark Elderkin, you're, you, you're gonna be frustrated with your team. You've done a great job of contesting the shot and forcing a miss. Finish with a rebound and then get out and play in transition. Blaine inside, nice play from uh, Ronald Blaine and a nice easy score for him. Now it's back to a seven point warning. Bowman putting the moves on Gale, drives inside, under the basket, misses the layup. Federici and Elliot Sulk battling out for it and here's Smith. Beats the double team and banks home the layup. I mean, what can you do with that if your team Newcastle? Malcolm Smith up to 17 points personal and just bodies through two defenders. And a whistle has gone, but a blocking foul has been called. Derby fans not happy with that call. As you see the replay of Malcolm Smith just driving inside, it's almost like he's making it effortless at the moment. And Malcolm Smith will take a seat. And Charlie Brown will come into the game for the Trailblazers with 3.24 left of the second period. Federici to Blaine. Moyer finds Gale. And Gale short with his three. And 
And pass from Charlie Brown just asking a bit too much of the athletic Blake Bowman. And if you're Newcastle, this is the time to make your run while Smith is off the floor. Match up a lot more favorably with the five for the Trailblazers that's on the floor now. So if you can try and pound it inside to Blaine and then get some stops, you could really chip away at this lead. Here is Blaine. Finds Moyer. Shot clock winding down. Blocked again by May Thompson. And a shot clock violation. It's the third block of the game for Raheem May Thompson. And I think all three of them have come after someone's managed to get past him. I think that they've got the advantage. And then he almost comes out of nowhere to swat it away. One of the more veteran players of this league in his second spell with the Trailblazers as Brueggemann misses the layup and May Thompson on the follow will go to the foul line. And yet more opportunities from the free throw line for Derby. I know, I was just thinking there's only so many times you can talk about the offensive glass and then I'm just limiting those opportunities. But I mean, it's, it's so tough, isn't it? When, when you give up an offensive rebound and then the offensive player has position, so tough not to foul in those situations. You don't want to give the layup up, but you've given up position. You're, you're almost side by side with the with the offensive player that you either have to give it up or foul. And, and at the minute, it's really hurting Newcastle. 14 offensive rebounds already in this half from Derby as Raheem May Thompson in his second spell with the club averaged around 21 points in his final season with the Trailblazers before moving on to the British Basketball League. Now settled back with the Trailblazers. And Malcolm Smith's cameo on the bench ends and he's back on the floor. Charlie Brown takes a seat. Here is Ubantu. Moya. Finds Federici back to Moya. Moya driving inside. Yabantu inside to Blaine and Blaine finishes as the shot clock was winding down. And that's the risk when you don't quite uh, don't quite know your matchup. They had two players fly out to Yabantu. You can contain him and just get a high hand and that gave them the advantage to then dish off to Blaine cutting down the middle of the floor. Hey, Thompson wide open three, but it's way off. Cork was going for the rebound. There are going to be those lapses for this Trailblazers defense where one possession here or there that you just mess up on the scout ever so slightly. You don't know tendencies of the guy that you're guarding, but so far they have done a really good job of containing and keeping in front, and, and that's what's played a big factor in, in limiting Newcastle. Charlie Brown yo-yoing from the bench to the court at the moment. He comes back on as uh, Leighton Elliott Sewell will take a seat, and Derby now in the penalty, so... John Cork will go to the foul line for Newcastle. Now in his second season with the club, averages around five points, four rebounds off the bench. A good big man to have. And for a team that's so guard heavy, having Cork on your roster off the bench is a positive for Mark Elderkin's team. Definitely. And, and you'd say to him, look, just body up with Smith and keep him off the glass. Don't worry about going for the rebound. Just limit him. Brueggemann now 0 for 5 from downtown. Moya misses the layup. Cork with the rebound. Federici open 3 and he puts it in. Brandon Federici now in rhythm from downtown. And how about that from Cork? A big defensive rebound, then the offensive rebound and the assist to Federici. That's a winning play from the big man. May Thompson probably one pass too many from the Trailblazers, but they get it back as the outlet pass from Newcastle was poor. Bowman, May Thompson, finds a bit of room, puts in a two, no good. But again, another offensive rebound from Derby. May Thompson, same spot, different result this time. May Thompson now moves on to nine, shooting two for seven from the field. Two for eight, excuse me, from the field. Here is Moyer. Yabantu looking for options, looking for Blaine, but he's well guarded by May Thompson. 
Another steal from Smith as the shot clock winds down. Moyer misses the three as we enter the final 25 seconds of the half. May Thompson for three is good. Raheem May Thompson and Derby's lead has ballooned to 49-37. And that's a huge free right at the end of the quarter and Newcastle going to take out for the last shot here and this could be a big one to really trim away. Blaine, final seconds of the half, no good. Good defense from Raheem May Thompson and that ends the first half here at Ponce Forge and the Derby Trailblazers lead Team Newcastle 46-37. As Malcolm Smith with 17 points and eight rebounds leading all scorers, Ronald Blaine with 11 points for Team Newcastle at the half, a strong first half showing by Derby as we will look to get some words in just a minute. Both teams have actually gone straight to the locker room, so we will just look to get a, a quick word in Hopefully with one of the two, uh, two coaches or one of the players. If not, we will go straight to Liam and Ben Stanley and Robert Banks. So a frantic first half of basketball in what has been back and forth. Ben, Derby's defense really setting the tone for the ball game so far. Newcastle really struggling to find anything easy at that end of the floor. Has that been the story for the first half for you? Yeah, I think so. I think both teams started off a little shaky, probably trying to get the rust off after, after the break. Um, Newcastle very much look like they're trying to get Lane or Benerich just struggling with it really. Excellent defense one on one on Blaine. Kind of been left without a lot of help and is still managing to, to slow him down. Um, but I think, yeah, Derby's defense, and uh, as I'm sure Rob will talk about, their rebounding has been a big factor. And Robert, let's just talk a little bit about the performance of Malcolm Smith in that first half 17 points and, and eight rebounds. And he's been dominant on the offensive glass as well. He's really been that forward in the side of, of Team Newcastle so far. Yeah, look, Malcolm's been outstanding. He's given uh, Newcastle a very difficult matchup problem. He's, he's drawn five personal fouls. I believe Newcastle's had seven fouls. Five of them has been on Malcolm. Usually when he's making shots and drawing fouls, that's bad news for the opposing team. He's done an outstanding job. And we talk about the offensive class being a factor in this ball game. At one point, they had 12 offensive rebounds for, for 12 second chance points. And that was with three minutes left to go before halftime and a couple more on the board there. What can Newcastle be, be talking about and look to do in this second half to really limit the offensive glass? I mean, for Newcastle, I think it's a struggle for them. They're going to have to gang rebound. They're going to have to bring guards back. You know, part of their strength offensively is that they leak out. They have guys running. You look, you see a lot of uh, deep outlet passes to the forwards. Um, so they maybe have to run a little less in order to secure those boards. Because if they keep leaking out, Malcolm's going to keep going to the glass. Elliot Sewell's going to keep going to the glass. It's going to be a real problem for them. And we saw a, a, a little bright spark for Newcastle with the form of, of John Cork, who came in, got a couple of big rebounds, got a score down the other end, and then that offensive glass with a kick out free for Federici. Is he someone that they can perhaps look to go to to try and limit Smith? Look, I think they need to do everything but the kitchen sink at Smith at the moment. <laughs> um, Newcastle's needs, I believe they need to pick their poison. Um, you can't allow Smith to continue. You've got to limit the number of touches that he gets. He's a big body. Uh, he's got a, an opportunity to give him some, some challenges more than smaller players. So I think he is an opportunity, but I think they've got to throw a little bit of every, everything at him. But at the same time, they can't throw everything at him and then leave Bowman free to, frame, to, to roam the glass because Bowman's also hurt them, not only on the break, but also on the glass as well. Yeah, definitely. And 
three-point shooting was one of the things that we talked about at the start of the game as being a factor in this. And Newcastle, it feels like at the moment, are being made to work for everything from the three-point line. Derby throwing bodies out to run guys off the line, doing a really good job of getting a high hand up on the, on the shot. Is that the way that they claw their way back into the game by trying to open up some of their shooters a little bit more, or do they adjust and try and start to finish at the rim? I, I, it's an interesting question. There's not been an awful lot of action from Newcastle. Um, you know, there's been a lot of spreading the ball, spreading the floor, double gaps for Blaine, a um, couple of force curl actions. I think maybe they do need to put something in there that allows the ball to move a little bit more because when they do move the ball, they're dangerous. When they create advantage, kick, get the extra pass, they become very, very dangerous. So I think that's the way they have to go. Um, otherwise, yeah, it could be, a, could be a struggle, but we know it's only a nine-point game. Newcastle can turn a 13-point deficit into a six-point lead very, very quickly. And it, it does feel like Newcastle at the moment are being made to work for everything on the offensive end. And one of the big reasons for that has been Raheem May Thompson's defense on Ronald Blaine, who, despite having 11 points on the board, has really been forced to work for everything that, that he's getting around the rim. Is that a matchup that we perhaps saw coming? I mean, Raheem May Thompson has three blocks already at halftime. Yeah, look, Raheem's certainly, uh, he's certainly making Blaine work. I think that was a matchup that we would have, would have seen. Someone has to ultimately keep Blaine out of the paint. But I also think that we can't underestimate the job, the job they're doing on Moya. Moya also drives and kicks a lot, and they've done an outstanding job of keeping him out of the paint. The first quarter, I thought Buckerman did a fantastic job of keeping him out of the paint. So when you have your two creators limited, it's very difficult to get your uh, your three-point shots. And that's where um, where the big fella could come in handy, where he gets some offensive rebounds and kicks the ball back out to the shooters because they are having uh, challenges getting uh, getting free shots. And a, and a shooting team has to be able to, you know, they have to shoot. And Ben, you, you touched on it ever so slightly just then, but Newcastle did make a bit of a run. I think they trimmed it down to four when it was 41 to 37. Is there anything that they can take from that run into the start of this third period that might give them a bit of confidence going into the second half? Yeah, I think absolutely. And Rob talked about it. They they kind of have to pick their poison, whether it's Malcolm, whether it's somebody else. And you could actually see in the, in the last part of the second quarter, they were very much denying Malcolm the ball and they were accepting that Raheem was going to take some shots on the weak side. Um, and I think if they can continue to do that and it works for them, then they're going to generate shots out of the break, um, which is how they brought that lead back, essentially. A couple of fast break shots, offensive rebound, and all of a sudden, as you say, it's back to a four-point game. Um, I, I don't think you can count Newcastle out until the, until the buzz is gone. You know, I just don't think you can. Um, so we'll see what happens in this next quarter. And Robert, from a from a defensive point of view, we talked about it on the comms, myself and John, is do Newcastle look at throwing a little bit of zone in there maybe to try and limit some of the driving lanes and the offensive rebound becomes a bit more of a problem then? Or do they stay with their matchup and going man to man? What do you think we might see from Newcastle defensively? I wouldn't be surprised to see a zone in the second half. Um, they may have held back in the first half not to allow uh, Darby the opportunity to prep for it at halftime. Um, a zone could be quite quite helpful. Keep in mind uh, the teams have been a little bit out of sync from their break. You throw a zone, force them to make outside shots. Uh, let's, let's face it, after a break it's much uh, more difficult to hit outside shots than layups. And you did touch on that, that Christmas break ever so slightly. I mean the first three or four minutes it did look like both teams were struggling to get out of Christmas but since then it's been a really highly competitive ball game. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's great fun to watch. Both teams are getting up and down. Um, there's some stints of really nice ball movement. Um, I think the, the interesting matchup for me that Bob touched on is that Brugham and Moyer matchup. You know, that's Moyer's very much the engine for that new team, as you've said. And conversely, Brugham seems to be quite content to run the offense but then when that clock goes down and that high release pull up that he's got that you can't stop he's able to make some big shots so I'm interested to see how that goes with those two as he goes down to the wire those two are going to be a real big key I think and so last question I'm going to ask it to to the both of you but it's almost a million dollar question if you could put a prediction on this second half Robert 
what do you think we're going to see at the end of the ball game? Are we going to see the Derby Trailblazers or the Newcastle Knights lifting the old Lynch Trophy? I reserve to answer that question until about <laughs> seven minutes into the third quarter. No, I, I really think the team that comes out and puts on a, a strong defensive effort in the third quarter, that's who my money's on. Um, you know, it's a tough one. I, I My head says Derby, but I, I've been on the receiving end of a Newcastle 15-0 run, so I, I can't count them out. It's a real tough one to call. Perfect. Well, I appreciate both of your inputs, fellas, in both the pregame and the halftime show. And now we've just under five minutes to go until the second half kicks off. We're going to head back upstairs to lead commentator John Hobbs. Thank you, Liam. Four. Thank you. Forty left of the halftime break before we resume play in the third quarter of this El Lynch Trophy final here at Ponds Forge in Sheffield Derby lead team Newcastle 46 37 John Hobbs Liam Jefferson will be joining me in just a second and as coach Ben Stanley alluded to Newcastle a strong fourth quarter team and of course his team the Nottingham Hoods have been on the wrong end of a 15-0 fourth quarter run in their last encounter just to showcase what Newcastle can do in the final 10 minutes as Liam just about joins us. And Liam, both teams shooting around 34% from the field, but what it's come down to is Derby have made use of their three-point plays. They've made use of their efforts at the foul line. Newcastle have struggled from downtown. They've opted to go a lot more inside and it's not created the greatest of success for them. No, and uh, we, we were touching on it a little bit down there courtside. It, it really feels like Newcastle are being made to work for everything on the offensive end, and that's credit to, to Derby's defense. But they're still shooting 37% from free, so if they can open up a couple more of those with those driving lanes and driving kick, I think the challenge at the moment is Derby are doing a great job of keeping a body between ball and basket and forcing them to play and finish over the top of a defender which then gives everybody else off ball a little bit more confidence because they don't need to help so much. It doesn't open up those passing lanes for the, for the jump shot. So if, if Newcastle can find a way, as Ben was saying, to, to get a little bit more offensive action flowing, try and get some of their shooters running off a couple of extra screens to, to really get open, then they can chip away at this lead. And, and both of them said it down there just then, but you can never count this team out. So it's... Okay, it's a nine-point ball game at this point, but that's three shots. If that's Federici to go back to back to back, which we've seen him do before, all of a sudden you're tied up in the ball game. And, and so I think they can take some confidence from it that if they can find ways to get some of their, their main guys in a bit of a rhythm and a bit of a flow, then we're still going to have a ball game on our hands. And I was just briefly speaking to a few of the Derby fans um, whilst you were courtside, and... They were very happy with Malcolm Smith's production so far. Of course, 17 points, eight assists for uh, the number 13. But they were more happy with how attacking Derby were playing right now. And that's something that, you know, we can all agree on. Yeah, definitely. And we, as we said before, Smith came into this averaging 25 points in the Lynch, but only 6.3 rebounds. And he's, he's got eight already, and three of them are on that offensive glass. And... He is being super aggressive down there. He's the sort of player that we were talking about it in the, in the second quarter. You, you can't give him that advantage in the paint. You can't allow him to get that easy catch. You've got to really make him work for it because once he gets it in there, he has that mid-range jump shot. He has that rip through that he loves to really bait you into the foul to then go to the basket. And yeah, you've got to, you've got to make him work for those catches so that he can't be as aggressive once he gets the catch. So just before we start the third quarter here at Ponds Forge, as you see a near full house here today. Great to see so many Derby Trailblazers fans here. Just a short drive along to Yorkshire. And there is a few Team Newcastle fans, a few uh, Newcastle Eagle fans also in attendance, which is great to see. Of course, they play the Manchester Giants a bit later on. Just before we start the third quarter, a big thank you to our sponsors for the L. Lynch Trophy, of course. L. Lynch Construction Company, 
who sponsor the event, the headline sponsors of this fantastic trophy, and five star trophies who are going to be presenting the lovely El Lynch trophy later on after this game. Who will it be, though, lifting the trophy? Will it be the Derby Trailblazers or will it be Team Newcastle University? Of course, last season, the Solent Kestrels lifted the trophy against the Thames Valley Cavaliers. We tried not to talk to Robert Banks uh, about that day <laughs> too much. Of course, he a part of your panel uh, earlier on. But um, a fantastic occasion in Leicester last season. We were both there for it. It was behind closed doors. Much different feel to it this season. It's just fantastic to have supporters back. And even with COVID, with this new variant that's been going around, it's still fantastic to see so many people jamming into the into Ponds Forge and just enjoying a great game of basketball, which is what we all want to do. Yeah, for sure. It, it's always it's always a better event, a better atmosphere when you have the fans in the building. <laughs> the Derby fans, like you said, have, have come out in full force. And yeah, great that we can kick off 2022 with, with a showpiece final so early in the year. Absolutely. For spending New Year's Day in Sheffield, it was very different to how I thought it would be, but hey... I'm not moaning. <laughs> Federici. Federici stepped out of bounds, and it will be a derby ball leading by 11. If you've just joined us on the Basketball England YouTube channel, welcome, everyone. Great to see so many people tuning in. Some great comments, great debate going on the live stream. Keep the comments coming in. Here is Brueggemann. Finds Smith inside. Smith on the spin off the glass, no good. Bowman got an offensive rebound, but uh, his follow-up wasn't any good either. Here is Gale. Gale finds Ubantu in the corner, and Ubantu strings a three. Just like that, it's a six-point ball game. And I think we saw the threat with Federici being open, although he stepped out of bounds on the first possession. And this is what Newcastle can do. Brueggemann, who hasn't had a lot of success from downtown. May Thompson, who's put in a few. He's short. Moyer, Gale. Newcastle haven't got numbers, so they'll reset. Here is Blaine. Gale, eight to shoot. Moyer puts up a three. That one Newcastle. would have made it really interesting if that would have gone down in the first couple of minutes. Six for 17 from downtown Team Newcastle in this game. Deertrick with a wayward pass, but Maheen, Raheem May Thompson collects. Here is Brueggemann. Good handles there from Brueggemann inside. And Smith blocked by Blaine. And Newcastle can break, but Derby have come back in transition. Federici gets the layup to go. And all of a sudden, the gap is now four in the early stages of this third period. Yeah, the Newcastle defense doing a great job of fueling their offense. You see Moya disrupting Brueggemann as well. Dietrich for three. Smith nearly got it back, but Newcastle will get possession back. And a good spell this for Team Newcastle, and it's just what they needed. Yeah, a little bit more disruptive on ball. They're putting bodies on bodies for uh, the defensive rebounds and really battling for it and we've seen that the first two minutes they've held Derby scoreless. Blaine travelled with it. Ah. Just took too many steps before he got his dribble going. And Derby will get possession back. Newcastle so far though, as said earlier, shooting 7 for 18 from downtown. It doesn't really feel like they've actually shot a lot of threes so far in this game. Again, Gale being disruptive on Bowman. Late Bowman picks up the pieces off his own miss. Yabantu putting the moves on Smith. Inside, misses, well, Blaine misses the ball, and here comes the Trailblazers. Dietrich finds Malcolm Smith. Great pass from Raheem May Thompson. And that's more likely from the Trailblazers. That's what we saw from them in the first half. A little bit more patience, finding Malcolm Smith inside for an easy finish. Federici inside. And Newcastle stay in touch. 
Brueggemann inside, banks it home, found a little bit of room, did Ryan Brueggemann, and he made no mistake. Well, it's been a back and forth start to this second half, and if this is the way the other 16 minutes are going to go, we're going to be in for a real treat. Blaine, backing down May Thompson. Double team comes, kicks it out to Gale. Gale, just below the elbow. And May Thompson rebounds. Brueggemann. Brueggemann pulls up. And Moyer with the rebound. Pace is just quickening up a little bit as Federici fakes his man, puts up a short two, and that's no good. And Smith with the rebound. May Thompson floats one in. That's an eight to seven quarter so far in favor of the Trailblazers. Both teams not struggling to put the ball in the basket to start the second half. Federici though struggling to put the ball in the basket from downtown. Two for seven now for Brandon Federici who leads the team in three pointers. Dietrich puts in a three throw jumper and Mark Elderkin has seen enough. He wants a timeout as Derby go into a 56-44 lead and for a good spell that Newcastle have, Derby have answered straight back. Yeah, and if you're Jonas Dietrich, you're gonna be pleased to see that one go down. His first make of the ball game, it's not like he's been a little bit hesitant and if he can start to get it cooking, Trailblazers are going to be in a really good spot. But yeah, for, for Newcastle, they're getting scores. They're finding them a little bit easier around the basket now, but they're just not getting stops. And you can't keep trading scores as you go through the ball game. You've got to get stops and scores if you're going to have any sort of opportunity to claw away at this lead. And at the minute, it's a three point, as you see Bowman going back up for the tip, another offensive rebound. Side, but it's a three-point lead in this quarter so far for the Trailblazers to just stretch that advantage ever so slightly. See Brandon Federici with the layup there and Ryan Brueggemann driving inside. Great move there from Brueggemann, but him himself, you know, only four points off two for ten shooting, but he has four assists and three rebounds and two steals to go with his stat line. And Derby really going to Malcolm Smith for their, the, the majority of their offense, Raheem May Thompson has 14 points and six rebounds to support him. As Malcolm Smith, you know, one rebound away from a double double. Yeah, and, and rebounds have been the story of the game. Derby out rebounding Newcastle by 15 already. That's where they're getting a lot of their opportunities. 23 second chance points for the Trailblazers. And that's just, if you're Mark Elderkin, not good enough as Federici misses another three, this time from the corner. There's that double-double already for Malcolm Smith. Brueggemann finds Smith inside, and Elliot Sewell, I don't think, was expecting the pass. Here is Blaine. Good defense there from Malcolm Smith, and the charge has been called. Ronald Blaine still down on the floor. That's a second foul on Ronald Blaine. Lightly tweaked his ankle as we see the replay, and he backs the basket. Oh, great job by Malcolm Smith of getting the body in front. Is he still moving? Hard to tell hard from the replay. Hard to tell, but you can see Blaine there just rolls his ankle ever so slightly, and he's tightening his shoe as he runs back on defense. Hope to see him continue. You don't ever want to see someone get hurt in a final or limited by a a tweak or an injury in a final. Absolutely, especially one of your top offensive players as well. Ronald Blaine still on the floor and backing down Smith. Smith will go to the foul line for two and Malcolm Smith really having his way inside all day long here in Sheffield. Seven for 17 from the field as Ubantu will take a seat alongside Brandon Federici. Michael Hamilton and John Cork will come in for Newcastle as Smith makes the first free throw and Derby's lead extended to 13 with a chance to extend it further to 14. I'm interested to see here what sort of impact Cork can have on Smith, whether that little bit of a 
extra size on Blaine. I think Cork coming in at 6'7", six, 6'8". Six, try and body him up a little bit more there. He was a big part of that, that short spell they had near the end of the third to claw that lead down to four. See if he can offer something here to help. Lane short with his three and Smith, the Tennessee native, with his 11th rebound. Brueggemann, the extra pass to Dietrich for three. Again, though, Derby get the offensive rebound, but this time it's stolen. Gale comes up with a loose ball. Here is Blaine. Moyer for three. No good. On the follow, though, was Blaine. They're the sort of plays that you're going to need to chip away at this, but such a tough shot for Moyer to take when he had two guys flying at him out on the three-point line. Smith inside. On the follow, though, was Elliot Sewell. Foul has been called. A touching foul there from Brueggemann. Excuse me, I think that was actually on Elliot Sewell. Yeah, it looked like he just, just bumped Moyer as Moyer was coming off that screen. And Moyer took one just on the chin. In the contact, calling the foul. Lane. Lane back in his mound, bound, blocked by Elliot Saul. Hamilton misses the two. Cork comes up with it, and John Cork will go to the foul line for Team Newcastle. Much needed offensive rebounds. Yeah. Big for time, Newcastle. Big time offensive rebound by Cork. And you see there as Blaine got into the paint, there were three Derby Trailblazers surrounding him, reaching for the stars to try and disrupt the, the shot. But the risk of that, obviously, is that then you leave someone open on the offensive glass. And that's where Cork, I think, can have an impact in this ball game. This is the first free throw, though. And Newcastle, who trail by 14, and we all know that they've been in these sort of situations before. Numerous times they've trailed by double digits, especially in the second half. And as soon as the fourth quarter comes, they're a different team. So don't count them out. They trail by 13 now, though, as uh, Cork split his free throws. And a steal. Hamilton comes up with it. Here's Blaine in transition. And Blaine with the easy finish. That ankle looked okay now for Ronald Blaine. Got up to throw that one down and their momentum starting plays. Bowman, nice move from Blake Bowman, just stops as he was about to drive and has an easy layup. Bowman, such control of his body in those moments when he slashed into the rim to finish off two feet. And you see when he attacks, that, that kind of hesitation as he gets on to two before exploding up to finish is what gets the defender to, to jump, thinking that he has the opportunity to block the shot, allows Bowman to just go underneath. And that's something that he's, he's mastered in, early on in his career to get some, some easy scores at the rim. Charlie Brown and Raheem May Thompson into the game for Derby, both now on the ball as Dietrich and Brueggemann take a seat. Smith inside, and Malcolm Smith will go back to the foul line for the Trailblazers, and you can see a smile on his face as well. As he goes to the line, 2.24 remaining. Foul, I, I think called on... I think that foul was on Blaine, I think. Blaine, if which would be his fourth, yeah. if so. Ronald Blaine will now take a seat as Nassim Abu Ramadan comes into the game for the first time for Newcastle, a former Worthing Thunder player, the number eight. Now in his second season with Team Newcastle. Here is Moyer. Moyer inside to Cork. Finds Gale, step back three, and he's going to go to the foul line for three shots. I think that's a foul on Malcolm Smith. Smith protesting, he felt like Gale left a foot out on 
number one. And I know referees have been very careful to look at what's offensive contact and what's defensive contact. And yeah, I think Smith's looking at that replay. Smith has right cause to think that Dale did just kick out that leg ever I mean, so slightly. At the same time, it's still hard to see from that angle, but. Gale makes the first free throw. Of course, Martin Gale, a former Leicester Warrior, now in his first season with Team Newcastle University. Averaging 13 points a game with Newcastle. Actually, a 95% foul shooter as he makes all three free throws. I'm getting a little bit of stick from the, from the Derby faithful there as a former player as well while he was at the line. He May Thompson finds Blake Bowman inside and Bowman will go to the foul line. Interesting look from Team Newcastle there showing that 3 2 zone defense. Just try and throw something a little bit different at the Derby Trailblazers. And the problem being, they flew over to this side, our side of the floor, leaving Bowman open on that long closeout. You have to stop short with him and try and keep him in front. Don't want to give him that opportunity to attack the closeout and get to the rim. Blake Bowman returning to Derby after a short stint in the States. Such an offensive fireball he was last season for Derby and Trailblazer fans so happy to have him back with the club. This is the second foul shot. Bodies on the floor. Gale Passes it to Moyer. Here is Gale. As Newcastle now have numbers, Cork. Cork finds Ramadan. Cork inside, short hook, no good. Gale gets the offensive rebound. Moyer. Foul line and his shot is no good. And Elliot Sewell with the rebound. May Thompson, nice pass inside on the follow. And the foul was Leighton Elliot Sewell. And the crowd here at Ponds Forge loving that one. Everybody on their feet. I think, though, the foul was before the basket. I think it will be Malcolm Smith going to the foul line. That's the second on Brandon Two fouls now on Brandon Federici as Blake Bowman takes a seat. Charlie Brown comes into the game. And yeah, Malcolm Smith will go to the foul line, so that score won't count. Great hustle, though, there from Leighton Elliott Sewell. Already now with eight rebounds. He himself is flirting with a triple double as well. Six points and eight rebounds. Malcolm Smith making. High clip at the free throw line as he goes now 10 for 13. In the free throw line, getting almost half of his points in the ball game from the charity stripe. And for Newcastle, you've got to keep him away from the front of the rim, keep him off the free throw line. And Smith, limit him. Smith leading the team with 22 points. Late Elliott saw with an easy layup. And Newcastle really need this quarter break to come now. Coach Elderkin not wanting to take a second time out, but Derby extending this lead with under a minute left to play. 67-52 to the Trailblazers. Cork, shot clock down to four. Boyer has to put up something and is fouled by Malcolm Smith. 31.1 seconds left of this third period. Very vocal Derby uh, following <laughs> in front of us. Great to see so many Derby Trailblazer fans here in attendance as Federici knocks down a three, a much needed three for Brandon Federici. Takes him to three for nine from long range and 15 points personal in the ball game. It feels like he's been a lot quieter than that. But he has the, he has the ability to heat it up. Brueggemann almost answered back. 
final seconds of this third quarter. Newcastle would love a score here. And Cabin Jelly's spin lost the ball, but it will stay a Newcastle ball with 1.3 remaining. This is a big possession for Newcastle. If they can get it down to 9 or 10, heading into the quarter break. Federici for three, knocks it down on the buzzer. And that is big a... three for Brandon Federici, back to back threes. And Newcastle has stayed in touch. They're now reduced it to single figures heading into the fourth quarter. And we know, Liam, that we all know what they're like in the fourth quarter. Yeah, we, we do. They've come back from bigger deficits in that fourth quarter in the past. The one slight worry I have is Ronald Blaine on four personal fouls. And at what point do you bring him back into the ball game? But what was looking like being a six-point deficit at the end of the third quarter, they would have gone in at 21-15 for it. Gets trimmed on that huge shot from Federici. At this point, like we were saying before, if you can go stops and scores and take it possession by possession, Newcastle can chip away at this and get themselves back into the ball game. I mean, I've been involved in games before where they've gone on massive runs with less yeah. than three minutes in the, in in a game. So. Ten minutes is plenty of time for them. The big question is, can they get stops? Can they limit Malcolm Smith? Can they keep him off the free throw line? Can they get defensive rebounds and get out and play in transition and, and play their brand of basketball? I, I don't feel like they've been able to do just yet. But Derby, are you going to have that psychological piece in your mind around we know this Newcastle team's a fourth quarter team. We're talking about it in the, the Lions Riders BBL Cup semi final earlier in the week. Way we're going into a fourth quarter, they'd started to allow them back into the ball game. Does that psychological element come into it? I mean, 10 minutes is a long way to go. Absolutely. And Newcastle trailed by as many as 15 against the Reading Rockets in the semi final, but came away with a 92 88 win. They've trailed by as many as 15 here today as well. All to play for. Shot partially blocked on the follow, May Thompson, and a foul. And that's not how you want to start the quarter, that's for sure. Another offensive rebound. 21 offensive rebounds for the Trailblazers at the start of the fourth. For 25 second chance points. Compare that to the other end and... There's almost, almost as many offensive rebounds as Smith gets and another. another one, exactly. Ball goes out of bounds as uh, Kevin Gelly was jumping onto the floor and it will stay a derby possession. Timeout has, time has been called. I think the referees just want to clarify whose ball that might have been, actually. Should really be a derby possession, but either way, a good start for derby. But as we mentioned, you know, Newcastle have trailed by 15, and they trailed by 15 in the semi-final as well. And this will be a big, big fourth quarter. It's a different stage. This is a big final, their first final in a very, you know, in their second season in Division One. This will be a huge, huge question mark for Newcastle. How they can respond now? Yeah, definitely. And that's a very early timeout for Coach Mark Elderkin as well, who now just has one timeout left and that's just 12 seconds into the quarter as well so he must have seen something that he really didn't like on those two possessions to just try and reset the team slightly but I do worry with one timeout for them and, and 9.48 to go just to how much he's going to have to coach through substitutions and through hoping that Derby take timeouts in order to convey his message to his team but See what impact it has here out of this one. Elliot Saul lost the ball. Here is Blaine back into the game for Newcastle on four fouls. Misses the layup. Deertrick, Brueggemann, Smith battling his way inside and scores. I mean, that's just too easy inside for Malcolm Smith after that catch. The defense almost parted to the front of the rim to allow him an easy score. Boyer, Federici, Federici inside off the glass and that's smooth. 
I've been really impressed by him today. His ability to adjust when Derby yeah, have looked to run him off the free throw line and send him to the front of the rim. He's doing a great job of, of making those reads. Nate Thompson stolen by Moya. It's one on one. Moya going inside. Good defense from Elliot Sewell. Federici wide open three is short. Moya is everywhere right now for Team Newcastle. May Thompson too strong with his floater. No doubt David Moya has put in a shift today. Inside to Cork, the extra pass to Gale. Gale way off with his three and Moya can't hang on to it. And we read in that piece from Ronald Blaine that Basketball England put on their website in preview that this team has a never say die attitude and they will continue playing for the full 40 minutes and nobody is displaying that more than David Moyer at the moment. The guy is all over the floor trying to impact winning in whatever way he possibly can do. Has five assists, however he is shooting two for 12 from the field. Dietrich in and out with his three in the corner. Here is Moyer again, Federici going inside off the glass, no good. Brueggemann comes up with it. Elliot Sewell. Nice Euro step from Elliot Sewell. Misses the layup. And it goes out of bounds. It will be a Newcastle ball. It feels like in this first couple of minutes of this fourth quarter, the referees are really letting a lot go compared to what's been called earlier on in the ball game. And it's like they might just let the basketball do the talking to decide a winner in this game. Blaine going strong. And Ronald Blaine will go to the foul line. You can see a few of the Newcastle fans to our left with a collective breathing in technique as the, uh, they awaited the whistle there and what call was coming as Blaine is on four fouls. Ronald Blaine, 35 points in their quarterfinal win against the Thunder and he backs that up with a double-double of 21 points, 10 rebounds in the semi-finals against the Reading Rockets. Someone who's Brings been three-time player of the week and six-time team of the week already this season. He's been really one of the standout players for me in the Division 1 season we've had so far. Absolutely. A couple of games with 40 points, one game with 50. Only Taylor Johnson averages more points than he does this season. Taylor Johnson averaging 30 points a game. And Ronald Blaine just short of that mark with 29.8. Federici off the steal from Moyer, and he has makes no mistake. And a quick timeout called by Matt Shaw. He's seen enough, and they've trailed by double digits. And I can see a smile on your <laughs> face here because you know what I'm going to say. Newcastle have... Staggered it briefly and have got it down to seven points with 7.39 remaining. And it seems that the comeback could be on. Yeah, here they come. <laughs> <laughs> they uh, stepped up the defense, just being a little bit more aggressive in the passing lanes, forcing uh, up the floor a little bit more to try and put Derby under pressure while they're handling the ball, which has allowed a couple of those steals, forcing turnovers. And they're leading this one, I think, eight to four. To start the quarter uh, if they can get a couple more stops and scores it becomes very very interesting and then we bring that psychological element in that we were talking about do Derby then start to panic a little bit and this is what this timeout will Absolutely, be from yeah, Matshaw precisely. it's a reset it's we've got the lead we're not chasing the ball game they're the ones that are chasing the ball game let's continue to play our brand of basketball get it to the spots that we've had success try and find Smith inside They've settled for a couple of jumpers that have allowed Newcastle to get out and run. And yeah, we could be in for a very entertaining seven minutes. So if you just joined us on the Basketball England YouTube channel, welcome. Great to see so many people tuning in today and no doubt an enticing last seven or so minutes left. Another steal, this time from Cork. Blaine. Finds Moyer, Gale, Gale with the pickup jumper, and that's no good. Smith gets the rebound. Brueggemann, and Bowman will slow it down. Here is Hugo into the game for the Trailblazers. Elliot Sewell 
Nice movement from Elliot Saul. Doesn't get the layup. Gets his own rebound, though, and picks up the pieces. No, he doesn't. And Newcastle will slow it down. Great spell here for Newcastle. A strong fourth quarter team. Off the glass is no good, and Smith again with the rebound. Here is Bowman. Bowman goes glass, no good. Smith, thank you very much. And at the opposite end, I feel like Ronald Blaine at the minute just playing for a little bit too much contact at the rim. Offensive, offensive foul play. there on David Moyer as the Derby fans rise to their feet on that call. And they are two championship winning plays. The big offensive rebound for Malcolm Smith at one end and then sacrificing your body to take the charge at the other end with Brueggemann who just looks like he's gathering himself ever so slightly as the ball's inbounded to him. <laughs> Ryan Brueggemann averaging 21 points in his first season as a Derby trailblazer. Here is Smith. Puts it up. Get there. His offensive jumper is no good. Another offensive yeah. rebound. Nice Elliot Saul, extra pass. Right. Hugo, Bowman. Yeah. They're queuing up. Shot clock winding oh. down. Oh. Brueggemann is no good with his three-point attempt. One pass too many, you feel, there from Derby. Yeah. yeah, definitely. And also Newcastle flying out at guys that aren't shooters, which is starting to give some of those opportunities. Trailblazers, you could see a couple of times the bench being like, no, that's not the scout. So Newcastle want any chance, they've got to adjust, make sure they keep in front and contain the Derby Trailblazers. Nice pass inside. Layup is no good, though. On the follow, though, Gavin Gelly doesn't get it. Brueggemann. Brueggemann from the elbow. Long. Almost, in fact, does get his own rebound. Bowman attacking. Bowman missing. Cork rebounds. Derby fans want a foul. Federici. Gale. Open three. Long. Federici gets his own rebound. And almost a set shot three. And that was short. Just a little bit frantic for the last minute and 30. Going to play into Newcastle's hands. They want to get a high paced game going for the last few seconds. Ball goes out of bounds, and Derby fans think that came off that came off a Newcastle hand. It didn't. It will be a it will be a, a Newcastle possession. I'm not surprised to see a couple of subs there as Newcastle go back to what is their strongest and starting five. The mistakes from absolutely Newcastle starting five now on the court as Moyer finds you Bantu shot clock down to seven stolen by Bowman here is Smith in transition good foul from you Bantu and Smith will go to the foul line for two this is what I was a little bit concerned about with that early timeout from coach Mark Elderkin is that you're struggling now to get some momentum while you're trying to claw your way back in, but you only have that one timeout left. And it's at what point do you take that? Because you're struggling to get scores on the last two or three possessions and you're allowing Derby to start to get their rhythm back a little bit at the offensive end. And the lead up to 10 because of it. Absolutely, 11 for 14 now from the foul line. Malcolm Smith, 29 points, 16 rebounds. A definite candidate for MVP should Derby win this game, but Newcastle still in this. Boyer. Inside to Federici, great pass from Blaine. And Federici with the two. Hugo. Stolen by Federici. Newcastle need numbers. Here is Blaine. Inside to Moyer. Wide open three. Knocks it down. David Moyer from downtown. And the gap has been trimmed to six. They do not give up. That's one thing you can say about this Newcastle team. They do not give up. Bowman doesn't get the three to go. 
And this could make it a two possession ball game. Newcastle slow it down, Blaine inside, too strong. He wanted a foul. May Thompson comes up with it. Bowman inside, blocked by Moyer. remaining, David Moyer with a huge stop at the other end. Timeout has been called, great timeout by by Matt Shaw. Yeah, you could just see Mark Elderkin screaming at Ronald Blaine as he came out there. I don't know what what that was, whether that was motivational or whether that was was because he wasn't getting back in transition. Yeah, I was just about to say that. There was a possession where Blaine didn't get back on defense. Moyer zoomed back and got that block in. I do feel like Blaine's playing for that contact still when he gets to the rim. Like, if you play to go and finish the basketball and get the score, you worry about the contact afterwards. Then the contact's coming and you can go to the free throw line. At the minute, he's trying to create a little bit too much and and get his body in in between the defender who's chasing back. And it could hurt them a little bit. But again, another big run from Team Newcastle to get it down to six. And it's really been fueled by Federici. Absolutely. And so far, Derby have found answers to Newcastle's scoring runs. And it's all about how they respond now. Newcastle asking a lot of questions of the Trailblazers. As a fantastic crowd here inside Ponds Forge today. It has been labelled as a sellout here at uh, Ponds Forge. Of course, people who bought tickets for the El Lynch Trophy final, also get access to the Sheffield Sharks, Leicester Riders, BBL encounter, which tips off a little later on this afternoon here in Sheffield, as Brueggemann will go to the foul line. Brueggemann, a 96% foul shooter for the season. And a technical foul was called on Ronald Blaine during the timeout. That's five fouls. That's him wow. fouled out of the game. That's huge. That and that is massive. That was during the timeout as well. Gail. Hamilton. Here is Ubantu. Well, excuse me, Hamilton. Federici off the glass. No good. So if Newcastle are going to come back, they're going to have to do it without their leading scorer, who's been fouled out on a technical foul. Dietrich, that would have been huge. But Yabantu comes up with it. For some Newcastle Eagle fans in attendance today, they will know Yabantu as Gale doesn't get the three to go. Smith rebounds. 17 rebounds (laughs) for Malcolm Smith to go with 30 points. May Thompson finds Bowman. Brugman, huge, puts it in. Big shot, Ryan Brugman. Extends that lead to 10, but so just takes a little bit of wind out of the sails of Team Newcastle. Moya, Yabantu to answer. Long, Gale with the rebound, an easy layup, misses the layup. Blake Bowman with the with the loose ball, here is Brueggemann. May Thompson gets it to go! Raheem May Thompson! The Derby fans rise to their feet. Final two minutes of this El Lynch Trophy final. Yabantu, Federici, short, Dietrich rebounds. going to send Brugman to the free throw line. Interesting that we didn't see a timeout after that last three-pointer from Raheem May Thompson in the corner as well because that stretched that lead to 13. Still, there would have been around 2.15 left on the clock when that went in. Brugman. As said earlier, a 96% foul shooter. 13 points, 10 assists in their semi-final win over the Solent Kestrels. 1.43 remaining 
in what has been a pulsating and almost breathless final here in Sheffield today. Moya, long three, no good. Gale, Ubantu, off glass, good. Elliot Saul, that came off Federici's foot. It will stay with the Trailblazers. I think the referees missed the foot violation. Nice pass inside and nearly the dunk there from May Thompson. Newcastle got back in time. Federici. Cross-court pass to Ubantu. Gale. No good with his three. Cork inside. Misses the layup as we enter the final minute. Derby leading by 13. And that's a little bit been the story of the game. The Newcastle not gone their way today. But a large part of that is to do with the defense of the Derby Trailblazers. And how much they disrupted them and taken them out of the style of play that they wanted. I mean, holding Newcastle to 71 at the moment is no mean feat when they're, Absolutely. they're averaging up in the 90s, I believe. And Mark Elderkin going to the bench. as Oscar Lee Hales checks in for the first time today alongside Jamie Rodwell and Nazim Abu Ramadan comes back into the game as well. Brandon Federici will take a seat as well. And for Newcastle, you know, Brandon Federici leading the way with 24 points as Kane King checks in for Derby and taking a seat You'd think for the final time, Malcolm Smith to a standing ovation. 30 points, 18 rebounds for Malcolm Smith. And what a performance from the Tennessee native today. Yeah, huge. And the, the big stat for me is those five offensive rebounds. That just shows how much he asserted his dominance in that paint in and around the rim. And he really was the difference in this ball game for the Derby Trailblazers. 26 offensive rebounds for Derby in this game. Make that 27 from Blake Bowman. And Derby will dribble the ball to just eat a bit more time. Ball goes out of bounds. It will be a Newcastle possession as the Trailblazer fans go to their feet once more. as both teams now going to their benches just so they can have a share of the court here in the L. Lynch Trophy final. Abu Ramadan inside to Cork, or excuse me, to Marsden. Marsden nearly lost the ball. Abu Ramadan, Hamilton. Driving inside and he'll go out of bounds. It will stay a Newcastle ball with one second on the shot clock. Abu Ramadan misses everything and Raheem May Thompson will dribble it out. And Derby Trailblazers are your 2022. L. Lynch Trophy winners. Thirty points, eighteen rebounds for Malcolm Smith, leading all scorers. Raheem May Thompson with 19 points and eight rebounds. A fantastic shift from the former BBL veteran. Team Newcastle though, gracious in defeat. Brandon Federici with 24 points. They had two players 
with double-doubles. Ronald Blaine, 15 points, 11 rebounds. Martin Gale, 11 points and 10 rebounds. But this is the Derby Trailblazers day. Of the win, huge 86 71 win. Defense being the story for you guys, and I know that was something you were looking into. How proud are you of the team that's behind you right now? Yeah, really proud of the guys. Thought defensively, we're excellent. Um, they're a really good team. We knew if we could hold them to less than 80, we had a really good shot at winning, and we managed to do that today. We made everything tough for them, so really pleased with the guys. And a big performance from the man stood behind you, Malcolm Smith. 30 points and 18 rebounds. Dominant on the offensive boards and in the paint. Huge factor for you guys today. He's always pretty awesome, and uh, I'm just so pleased for him to put a performance like that in when it really mattered for us. He's been great the last few years for us, and I'm just so pleased for all the people that are associated with the club. But Malcolm's captain does this year, and to step up on the final like that is just phenomenal. Shows all of what Mal's about. My massive congratulations again and thanks for joining us. Go and enjoy with the team. Yes. Malk, just a quick word. Huge performance from you today. 30 points and 18 rebounds. I mean, that's one of the best performances I've seen from you in, in this country. Just what does it mean for you and the team today to get this win for, for those fans that are up in the stand as well? Yeah, it means everything. Uh, we wanted to come in, just play hard for the fans. Uh, that's just what my mindset was, come in, just play hard, play with energy. And I ended up getting 20, re almost 20 rebounds. So I, I, I was just trying to play hard. It kind of reminds me of the first time I won the cup when I came to this country, just playing hard, trying to get rebounds, you know, trying to help the team any way I can. And, Pulled it out. The fans deserve it, so we wanted to give it to them. So, and team defense being the story as well, it looked like everybody was on the same page executing the scout. How much has that defense been the, the catalyst for this victory for you guys? Yeah, it's become our, become our identity now is defense. So that's kind of what we want to hang our hat on now. Is just playing defense. We got the length. We got the athletes to play it. Uh, the smarts. Um, so we just want to hang our hat on that for for the rest of the season and kind of just build on this win and take it into the rest of the season. So. I appreciate you joining us. Don't no, want to keep you too long. We want you to let you go and enjoy it with the team. So congratulations and go and enjoy it. And we'll head back up to John upstairs. Thanks, Liam. As the Derby Trailblazers line up at the foul line, getting ready to receive the L. Lynch Trophy. Russell Levinston, director of Leicester Riders and representative for the National Basketball League Division One, will be handing out the medals alongside Sarah Bakovic of the Sheffield Sharks. as a fantastic L. Lynch Trophy final here in Sheffield. It was originally scheduled to be held at the Worthing Leisure Centre, but due to logistical reasons, Derby and Newcastle requested the game to be moved to Ponds Forge, which they duly obliged, and it's, they have put on a fantastic show here today in front of a near full house in Sheffield. As the table officials get their medals, as you see the fans of the Derby Trailblazers. And Liam, as you join us, it's been a fantastic spectacle here today. Derby have not had to travel too far and they've traveled in their droves. Newcastle well represented to the left of us as well. And it's been great to have, hasn't it? 
yeah, it, uh, we spoke about it a little bit during the game. It's just awesome to be able to have everybody back in the building and to be able to start the year in, in style. And it has been one hell of a final. I think on the day, the, the right team has, has come away with it. I've been really impressed with the Derby Trailblazers today. And for Newcastle, their first final as a Division One club in their second season in NBL Division One. They proved a lot of doubters wrong. They were one of the surprise packages last season and they proved that this was no fluke as they reach a domestic final. They came up short today. Great to see so many Newcastle fans here. Most of them Newcastle Eagles supporters. They'll be traveling along to Manchester after this game as Newcastle Eagles play Manchester Giants at Bellevue, but still great to have them on board supporting Team Newcastle. Yeah, for sure. And that, that adds to that strength of, of, of the whole British basketball landscape. You start to see BBL teams having more links with Division One teams. But, I mean, the, the one thing, and we spoke about this in the pregame show with Robert and with Ben, the one thing that has really impressed me this year is just the strength of Division One in general. These are the teams that are fifth and seventh in the league, and they've just put on a showpiece final for us. I think that British basketball, BBL Division 1, is, is in a really good spot. But, yeah, credit to those fans that have come here to be able to support and that will hightail it over now to, to Manchester to support there as well. And it is now time for the Derby Trailblazers to receive their winners' medals. And at the end, the El Lynch Trophy. And for Derby, Liam, a first final since 2014. That was the year as well that a Derby basketball legend unfortunately passed away in... Um, Clarence Wiggins. In Clarence Wiggins. Excuse me, my headset went wrong there. <laughs> <laughs> in Clarence Wiggins, excuse me. A absolute legend of Derby yeah. basketball and a guy that is sorely missed and no doubt... He is looking down in Sheffield today and is applauding the fantastic efforts of the Derby Trailblazers. Yeah, someone that laid the foundations for this club and, and played a big part in, in my junior basketball journey as well. And I know, like you say, we'll be, we'll be looking down on the team and the performance that they've, been, they've put in. But it also speaks to how a lot of these clubs wouldn't be able to do what they do without people like Clarence that are up and down the country with, with every team that really built the foundations to then to then grow to where they are today. So yeah, I'm sure everybody associated with the Derby Trailblazers will be will be super proud of that performance that that group of men have put in today. And for MVP it, it's almost <laughs> academic but um, we'll just hang fire one moment as Matt Shaw will get his winner's medal as well. As Mike Shaft will be now organizing and announcing the MVP. <laughs> as he just announces that it wasn't really much of a job. <laughs> it's a unanimous Malcolm Smith, L. Lynch Trophy MVP for 2022. 30 points, 18 rebounds. And as you say, Liam, five of those coming from the offensive end. That was a huge factor in this win today as Malcolm Smith will collect the MVP trophy. Yeah, he was dominant in the paint. Also going to the free throw line for 15 attempts and made 12 of them. So in just how hard it was to contain him and to... I mean, he really was the lifeblood of, of the Trailblazers today. Honorable shout out as well to Raheem May Thompson. I thought he played extremely well. He had 19 points, three blocks, nine rebounds. And his defense on Blaine was a big factor in the Trailblazers win today, but yeah, you can't look any further than Malcolm Smith, the big man coming up huge for the Trailblazers when it mattered most. 
And now the moment Derby Trailblazer fans have been waiting as Blake Bowman lifts the L. Lynch Trophy for 2022. The first final since 2014 and they return to the final stage and lift the L Lynch Trophy. Congratulations to the Derby Trailblazers. Commiserations to Team Newcastle University. But Liam, as we sign off for this season's L Lynch Trophy, a fantastic season again, a fantastic tournament once more, full of fantastic highlights. But in the end, the right team got the job done. Yeah, definitely. And we, we've spoken about it a lot. Their, their team defense being a huge factor in that and really limiting a team that's so high octane like Newcastle. And Derby really do deserve it. And this sets the tone for the rest of the Division One season. We have the league championship still to play for. We have the National Cup to play for. And then we have the playoffs to play for all the will be streamed here on the Basketball Absolutely. England YouTube as well. So it really does set the tone for what will be a great second half of the season. Absolutely. And that wraps up our coverage of the L Lynch Trophy 2022. And the next time the NBL Live team will be on your screens, we will be returning to Southampton as the Solent Kestrels face the Bristol Flyers in the WNBL. And then the Kestrels men will take on the Derby Trailblazers. It'll be on the 15th of January. So tune in to NBL Live on the Basketball England YouTube channel. But for now, my thanks to Liam Jefferson. I'm John Hobbs and a warm afternoon to you all.